John in London. Hello, it's January 29th, 2013. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Substance for me, alcohol, alcoholic, now in recovery, one day at a time. And also in recovery around people, places and things. Trying to be perfect, when indeed I can never be perfect. I'm simply going to make progress today and probably by the end of today I'll know a little bit more about who I am. So it's not about me be becoming something or trying to be something I'm not. I'm just learning how to be me and what feels most comfortable and making progress, finding some usefulness in life. What's made this possible? Well, recovery, being in recovery one day at a time, is courtesy of professional help to identify what the problem was even though I ought to have guessed. My best, my best friend alcohol was killing me and then ongoing support in some way so everything is reinforced. Reinforced on a daily basis on common ground and then getting the freedom to choose. And the common ground I found was in fellowship and that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. And why was it that all those professionals said we can only do so much, but then you need continuous support. And if you can't afford it, like I, well, I was destitute at the end of my drinking, and if it hadn't been for my sister, I would be dead. But it didn't help me in the end. What I really, really needed was ongoing support to reinforce, it's okay to be sober, live life realistically, life on life's terms, and see what happens next. So the good, bad and ugly of life happens and I continue to be sober and learn how to resolve and find solutions as I go along, often by asking for help within the fellowship or from professionals depending on the issue. So a few years into recovery, had a minor operation, got type 1 diabetes. Am I alive long enough to get it? What do I do about it? Well, it took a year to get diagnosed properly, which was a bit of an unfortunate set of, what was it, an unfortunate set of events, just like Lemony Snicket. But anyway, I, then, I finally got what I needed, professional help, so I could still remain sober and get on with life. So AA is the bedrock. I share about AA here. I am not a spokesperson for AA. I'm just sharing how it works. I cannot speak for you if you're in the fellowship and if you're thinking that you need a help, helping hand, then fellowship might be the right place for you. I don't know. Only you can make those choices. So a choice to be sober is a daily activity because the world can drive me mad. I share the AA preamble, which is the start of every meeting if you go to a fellowship meeting. And there are meetings for newcomers medium timers, old timers or day timers, people who live in the day like me. So, I don't know who said it, I think it was a uh, guy called, I was watching the, I'm not a particularly affiliated religious person because I just don't know, but I was watching the Power Hour on Sky One on Sunday, I'm so, I forgot what I was going to say now, he says you, yes, you can live a man of 83, or a woman of 83, can live to 83, and they may have the same year happening over and over again. So they've only lived one year, and it's always the same. <coughs> but in recovery, life is always changing, we are always changing. So we're going to have 83 years of change. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a cough. Where did that come from? Anyway, so... Part of recovery for me is living each day as it comes, and they keep on changing. No two days are the same, no two moments are the same. And how do I live them? Hopefully living with reality. So I'm going to share some notes of the things I've written this morning. Based on the things I've heard, based, based on things I've been feeling right about or wrong about, based on just being me today. So it's a sort of dear diary, but it's, I'm sharing it because it is about experience, strength and hope of recovery. So, January... Ooh, I've got the wrong date, or I've picked up the wrong one. Let me just check. 
Yeah, I'll change it now. I'm doing my correction as I go. January the 29th. January's been all about powerlessness, powerless over alcohol. And if I admit that and accept it, and then work on how not to drink one day at a time, that's been going on for quite a number of years now, and that's because I'm in fellowship and getting the right help. So my thoughts and feelings today. Fellowship, common ground and personal freedom. A society of human beings working together in unity, service and recovery. One primary purpose, and that's a desire to stop drinking, and help others recover from alcoholism. Developing personal choices, learning the can-do of life, and cannot do of life, and the wisdom to know the difference, just for a day and then, maybe another day. So the whole time frame is one day, and then we carry on. Now, the whole world is full of people telling others what to do, and I don't tell you what to do here. The world is full of marketing people determining what we ought to be doing and what we ought to be having, and they don't all work for Facebook. They work for Google and all the internet companies and they work for every company on, th on the planet. Somebody's involved in trying to persuade you to do something. The world is full of people telling each other what to do. People, places and things can drive us mad on any given day and make a return to old feelings, old attitudes and old behaviour. Very possible because we feel good, because it's something we like, we feel bad and we feel the ugly of life. So anything can challenge our return to old thinking and old behaviour. I know how to fix myself. I'll go down the pub. That will solve all my problems for about 0.0 of a second and then back in the old way. With all these challenges in life, but don't forget if you do slip or relapse, keep on coming back. And that's not because you're a failure it's because you're human. Human beings on their own very often make poor decisions about their health. With all these challenges in life where people are telling us what to do, how on earth do we st stop some doing something harmful? Our lives are lost in oblivion, lost in self-harm and cut short because we cannot stop hurting ourselves. Alone it feels impossible that's to stop drinking or any self-harm because it's causing oblivion or the feelings to be changed. We feel we've got some sort of control when we haven't. And cut short because we cannot stop hurting ourselves. Alone it feels impossible but the world tells us we ought to be able to stop harming ourselves. In our fellowship we recognise that unity around one single issue, keeping sober, one day at a time can open the door to a new life of freedom and usefulness and of course to determine your choices and you will learn what your usefulness is so you don't need to know what your usefulness is on a daily basis you may have a job which is useful because it pays the bills and provides food and helps the family and helps you survive but it might not be your real usefulness which you are yet to discover and you can only do that really as you go along. I just saw Bill Gates on the TV who wants to eradicate polio and there's a great possibility he might do it. Not on his own of course, but the world is still, where it's still prevalent, the world is against him and the idea of interference, so it's difficult. But that's his usefulness. Maybe Microsoft was his usefulness back in the day, building it but now his usefulness is, is, is as a philanthropist. And, you know, around a single issue, which is the same as fellowship, really, around one, one issue to keep sober, but it's many people in this case. And his way of doing it, you've got many big bucks and many people who maybe can persuade and include others to help eradicate polio. Same sort of issue same sort of difficulty. Don't tell me what to do. Anyway, every single day we will feel judged by other people and by one another and in the here and now the critic 
the critic inside us, which looks to the dark side of what people might be thinking about us, how we appear and what the world thinks of us. We are our own worst enemy when it comes to judgment, because there's a critic inside my head which says, could do better. And that's what I'm saying here. In my case, I was never satisfied with my own situation. I felt I could do better. Could do better at work with girlfriends. Could be better. There was nothing wrong with them, but there was something I needed to do to make it perfect. And could do better was something to be found on a school report, a college report, a work performance review, and I wrote it. Whilst others judging me might be quite favourable, I was always concerned to improve, and I will always pick up on the fault rather than the overall good. And it's more than that. It's, it, it's acceptance of the truth of now, in the end. I was always concerned to improve. In fellowship, unity, service and recovery, it's about progress, one day at a time. So it's not about being perfect. And it's more than that. It's acceptance of the truth of now. And in the truth of now, nothing is absolutely perfect. The best it can be is imperfectly perfect, because we're making progress. In the ever-present, present moment of now. So it's all changing around us, and so we might as well join in. And if we hold on to the wrong things, old feelings, attitude and behaviour, when we're an alcoholic, where would we go, first off, without help? Uh, we would go and console ourselves, as the chief critic in here is having a go. Every single day we, feel, we will feel judged by other people and by one another in the here and now. The critic inside us, which looks at, to the dark side of what people might be thinking, and all of that, it's still going to go, keep on going on. Just because we say, or I say, fellowship is about common ground, and this is the fellowship of AA, it does not make it so. And although the traditions of the fellowship are quite clear, they are suggestions. They're not, they're not edicts, they're not tablets of stone. And you can't violate them because they're suggestions. They take account of imperfectly perfect people trying to get well today. So it's about recovery, working together. It's, it's a loose, tight fit. Sometimes it's very loose and it feels good and free. And then sometimes we stick tight because we're feeling the grip of the panic associated with alcohol and, you know, fearing relapse. But if we keep it in the moment, there's nothing to fear, generally, unless there's a great big bomb or bus coming in our direction. We can live through it. Well, not live through it, live in it and experience what's going on for us, what our feelings are, how our thinking is. Everything is about now, what we can do and what we cannot do, and, the learn and learning the wisdom to know the difference. Fellowship is imperfectly perfect, absolutely fantastic principles which would make any society or fellowship robust and efficient in keeping people sober. But we're human, and I wasn't a perfect example. It took me a long time to undo my feelings about me and wanting to even having an inkling of what life could be like without a drink, an inkling, because those god-awful first days of recovery were absolutely dreadful for me. Now, that doesn't apply to everyone. Some people suddenly think and feel right about stopping, and I don't know how they do it. It's a miracle. And I don't know what the intervention is, other than they have the ability to listen and understand and say, well, it will be a miracle if I stop drinking, and the miracle is I need not drink ever again. And that's the truth of it. But it took me a long time because I'd spent a long time drinking. So I don't encourage people to drink more to feel bad. I'd encourage people to recognise they may have a problem, and only you can determine if you're an alcoholic or not. But if you have a desire to stop drinking, it might be a good idea to check out fellowship. But also get, first and foremost, always, is my, my prime thing, is check yourself out medically, because whatever the aches, pains and all the rest of it, the desolation that's going on, it may need a, a medical eye, a professional eye, 
to help you so you're on a level playing field in fellowship in other words you've got enough marbles going on in your head working rather than an incomplete set like me well it's not so bad these days as you, well, for me it's not that bad these days anyway newcomers find out quickly that fellowship is only as good as the people we are in it the people that we are with today and a lot of people can be good bad and ugly almost in the same moment people react to experience strength and hope in different ways sometimes unable to contain themselves because of the humor of what has happened and what is shared and sometimes able to contain themselves because of the sadness and sometimes it just appears like it's complete anarchy laughing one minute crying the next because these are feelings coming out right now and mad because we all get mad now and again and just for today so you know even in sobriety we can feel as mad as hell as we learn what common ground is and not about telling each other we are on common ground and sometimes it feels level sometimes uneven and sometimes it can be a despicable in the it can be all despicable in the moment when people start telling each other what to do in moments of insanity <coughs> And this insanity can last for days in our own heads. So if we've been snubbed or put down in some way in a meeting, which is very likely to happen, because there's nothing like an old timer telling you what to do. You need to do the 12 steps and then you'll be all right. Or come back when you've done the 12 steps and I'll have a conversation with you. Those sorts of old timers are called bleeding deacons. And they're a bleeding nuisance. Anyway, they exist because they can and they are not living 83 different years they're living the same year 83 times now that's interesting isn't it anyway and these are, yes this insanity can last for days in our heads because we feel it for the first time we don't take a drink to say bollocks to all of that we feel it and it can go round and round in circles depending on the issue of quite a time because some things will bug us desperately yeah if people start telling you what to do we have many options what is the best option well we have a step called step 10 which is taking your own inventory and not the inventory of the other person which is to keep your side of the street clean and try not to tell, tell others to fuck off and mind their own business because eventually with good fortune they will re return to their side of the street of their own accord so we don't have to be nasty with it although sometimes I have been unpleasant and told people to fuck off and mind their own business because they haven't done their haven't got their facts right but you see I'm human and I didn't say it to a newcomer I said it to an old timer or no better but I did go back and apologise I said I need to keep my side of the street clean and I'm very sorry I told you to fuck off and they said okay and that was it I wasn't looking for an apology because I wasn't going to get one because they still, still don't understand me and they don't want to and that's perfectly okay by me fellowship is big enough and robust enough with so many different people in it with different outlooks and opinions that we all live together on this common ground of insanity or being restored to sanity on a daily basis yes I can feel like I'm being driven to a distraction sometimes the world is just unfair I find it hard to cope and I just don't know what to do with myself usually it is a reaction to my powerlessness over big events in the world and less often to do with my own personal situation which becomes manageable my own personal situation manageable contingent on my spiritual condition spiritual condition for me is the ability to cope with what is going on and my feelings fit with what is going on in reality or simply feeling okay just now when I cannot cope it's still a spiritual condition when I cannot cope with my own situation the beauty of fellowship is continuous the more often I am in the company of people in recovery utilizing the 12 step principle to resolve life in the moment of now and find solutions the more able I am to cope as I keep on learning living skills through the experience 
the strength and hope of others being shared around me today. So if I go to if I go frequently, and only you can decide if you need frequency. I don't know that one meeting will do the trick. I found that I keep on learning from people who are learning. And the whole key to this is humility. Anyway, I'll say something about humility in a minute. Early days. This is my when I was in early days. I need a fix. No, I don't. Yes, I do. If only the world understood me and my needs and realised I was right all the time. Me, me, me. I want it now. All addictive signs of trying to fix myself. Impatient, indeed. When people said in fellowship, slow down and take it easy, they had, they had no idea how fast I wanted progress and to show the world how sober I was and perfectly able to cope. So I drove myself sketchy reading the books the fellowship books so I had the knowledge in here but I didn't know how to apply it how to put it into practice so theory it's like if you do a degree I've got a degree somebody offered me a bigger one an MBA and I said no thanks that would be good if you had one because you're you're coaching MBA students and I said in order to get an MBA I would have to be integrating my work, which is already MBA standard, and it would be a false premise. So I didn't go for it. I didn't say, yes, give me an honorary one, because it wouldn't have been earned. But now I look back and think, well, quite nice to have that one. And it would only have cost a few quid compared to the amount I help people spend on getting their MBAs from very big business schools all over the world. Anyway, that's an, an old story. So I really needed to start from scratch. And I'm an FAA now. F.AA. Fellow in Alcoholics Anonymous. Equal to you. Whoever you are. Whether you're at the top of an organisation or some of my friends who sweep the streets around here. They're fellows in active... Well, at their FAL... Their FALs fellows in F-I-A-L oh no it almost sounds like fail but they're fellows in active living I should look for a better mnemonic yeah so I utilise the 12 steps to resolve life in the moment and find solutions slow down take it easy they had no idea how fast I wanted to progress and show the world how sober I was I was perfect and then be perfectly able to cope Learning to get back into the present moment, deal with my issues and problems, find help in the find help in the solutions meant it was going to be a hard slog. Until I stopped looking over my shoulder for the person who would shoot me down in flames. So there was always this paranoia that somebody would find me out as not good enough to be an alcoholic in recovery. But there was no person looking over my shoulder, simply the fear in me and the critic in my head all the knowledge so why can't I put it into practice and why do I have to go through this hard slog well the simple answer was I had to go back to my old principles of learning life and learning how to do things and I had that flexibility but alcohol took it away for quite a while and put me in the darkest depression for years it was years of depression and that is there are no words for the horror and desolation that gives a person and you know uh, even today I take a mild form of medication to improve my chemical balances not only caused by type 1 diabetes but I've had cl clinical depression or whatever it's called today all my life and it's gone in long cycles which can be determined if you do a step 4 you know the high points and the low points and what's going on in between so some of us have had chemical imbalances which have been masked by drugs and alcohol because it's self-medicating away pain and desolation and it's horrible when nothing works so don't think I'm not aware but it's as horrible as you feel it and experience it and it's, it's a tragedy that we go through these times because they are abnormal they don't have to be like that there's no such thing as a happy pill by the way there is a 
a chemical restorer of balance or as near as damn it it's something that is learned through long years for me anyway the notion of slowing down and taking it easy when you're just coming into recovery just sounds like madness because we feel under the weather and we don't feel right so there was no person looking over my sympathy the fear and in me and the critic in me ready to pull me down and make a slip a relapse or deathly de decision to ter return to drink when my mind my feelings don't feel right I know it's time to make sure I am attending regular meetings of fellowship where the answers can be easier and sooner rather than later and often for many they can be too late if we are driven, driven back into insanity we are dealing with something over which we are powerless powerless and it makes life unmanageable so learning that new <coughs> the step one of this program is daunting because it's the biggest ask and then every day is an ask the end of fixing the start of living in the moment living in the moment is going to happen and life is to be experienced in the moment and continues there is no end until the obvious end when we drop dead and an intervention can help anyone anywhere find their way back to sanity with the right help in the right place at the right time interventions for example medical and professional can help us admit and accept the emotional and spiritual madness of addiction that we keep on doing it over and over again and yet as individuals we can find denial most helpful after all who wants to lose their best friend in life even if it is a substance called alcohol or heroin or whatever it is or crack or something else it takes away the pain and then creates the pain it takes away the problems and then makes more problems it takes away reality and then there is no reality it takes away our essence which is love and then there is no love how on earth could we have been persuaded that addiction takes away everything because when we are when we are addicted everything goes and then there is nothing and then surprisingly with the right help there is nothing to lose <coughs> and if my sister hadn't said to me why don't you do try this one day malarkey <coughs> see your, how you feel each morning where did she get these words she's not an addict I guess she must have done some I think obviously with the career that she had she encountered many people who needed help but her professional career had absolutely nothing to do with addiction very smart lady my sister anyway common ground and she saved my life and I don't underestimate what she did for me and uh, the guilt of the family around me when they cut me off because I was just impossible to deal with if I couldn't solve it how could they and then you know, um, another fellowship said you know if he can't stop what makes you think you can stop him and the answer is they couldn't and the loving thing was to see where I sunk to and if I was still alive looking back it's horrible but looking forward it's not so bad or well, living in the moment is blinking marvellous common ground this is what it's about in fellowship for me based on unconditional love when the fellowship may not really have many within it who understand and live unconditional love because we're not perfect but you know we can be held up as why aren't you practicing unconditional love on me and why am I finding it so bloody hard to say stay sober well three fingers pointing back one pointing at somebody no single person can keep one alcoholic sober which is why it's the very many voices and not just my voice or just one other voice which is going to keep people or one person sober because we'll get the blame if it doesn't work now of course it won't work with one person yes we get a taste of love and find no, no this is what happens we get a taste of love and find no conditions attached because lots of people are trying to be helpful and nobody no single person is overwhelmed trying to help one person 
and we are suspicious of these righteous are we suspicious of these righteous, righteous people who don't drink anymore well I bloody well was it turned out that in the beginning it was my neighbours people at the health club people at the arts club and people who knew me professionally who were about which was a bit of a shock and doctors nurses dentists you name it all in recovery not drinking one day at a time and they weren't righteous they just wanted to be helpful until we realise we are simply making progress that unconditional love towards other people is part of learning how to love yourself enough in recovery to give it a go and the whole concept of love is you know we're bettered by the time we get to rock bottom only we, when we say to ourselves why not be a part of this fellowship rather than an observer or a tourist or a tourist do we start to understand that it, it is okay to be empty desolate and desperate that it is okay to live through painful times and find level and balanced moments happening where, it's, where there isn't a gut wrenching feeling where there is no fear what the hell's going on and that something starts to make sense in the moment of now which is well actually I've stopped drinking for a day or two and I'm not dead even though the pain is excruciating or the pain is going away physically as the days pass and out of a complete breakdown in emotional living we are broken to pieces the fragments can start to form again inside and in a different way and that is why in fellowship asking for help is so critical to learning life again and the word humility can sound grandiose it's a big word humility all it means is why not try to learn again and ask for help and that is the hard part having to change our outlook and have the courage to change almost minutely and impossibly one day at a time courage to change faith in doing the next right thing and gently building confidence that life can be lived again some people call this a psychic change and depending on your belief system and your opinions you will find a scientific common sense and some form of understanding about what is spiritual in every moment I came this is me because I can't speak for you or anyone else I don't want to speak for anybody else and I don't want to impose my views because th well, they're only working for me at the minute and I may change my mind you know, life is not set in stone I came to the conclusion that truth, love and wisdom in the moment of now that is the basis on which to make decisions my spiritual condition is the way I am in this moment of now so my spiritual condition contingent on knowing my, how I feel about the world right now how I feel about my personal circumstances my personal I'm in a mess I've got things scattered all over the place but personally emotionally I can live in a mess for a bit and I've got things to do I'm up to the ears with things to do so my spiritual condition is the way I am in this moment and now and being able to cope with what is going on is courtesy of recovery and fellowship give me, giving me back my freedom to know what I can do and cannot do today no longer chained to a substance no longer chained to notions about how to be with people places and things based on the old life I was very good at things in the old life but the old life was killing me the new life is freedom to choose to live sober first and then anything can happen with people, places and things as the possib possibilities happen moment to moment now don't forget that applies to you too you may be good with the existing people, places and things and life is hunky-dory, not drinking and sober and it keeps on getting better but I could not do the old life again it had burnt me out and that's true it burnt me out I couldn't go back and do it again without a barrier in between me and it and that would be called alcohol that's how I forced out everything to find oblivion so I could sleep and then it didn't work 
So, what about fellowship? Full of good people, sometimes behaving badly. Full of bad people, sometimes behaving well. Timid people, loud people, mad people, restore to sanity people. Full of good people, yeah. Restore to sanity, sometimes momentarily. And then often for a whole day. Not often, because any of us can be driven mad as hell on any given day by events. So we live in the moment and events hit us and we're experiencing them. In the moment of now, not with a mountain of crap which we've sorted out. But hang on a minute, what's my part in this? How do I feel about it? What can I do? And that happens in the flash of a moment. Like in the, in the past, we might get angry and resentful. In the, in the present, right now, oh, why? Oh, this feels wrong. Why am I here? And then work it out. What can I do and what I cannot do? So we can be driven mad as hell in any given day by events. And we can live through that madness and get back to sober outlooks far faster with our friends in fellowship one day at a time. And that, you know, this is practical wisdom. So my last sentence is, practical wisdom is a kind of magic. <coughs> practical wisdom is a kind of magic. And it can be miraculous magic. Because it's... We're dealing and coping with life in the moment of now. And when we can't, we ask for help. And we say, I feel good about this situation. I don't feel so good. We own our feelings. I'm not saying it's your fault out there. I'm saying, how, how do I feel about that? So if I, I own my feelings, I feel uncomfortable right now with the other person might, or people might be feeling exactly the same way. So what can we do, it, do about it together? Empathy. Foundation of love. Unconditional love. Living together. It will never always be harmonious because, you know, short people growing up You've got grown-up people shrinking and shriveling. It used to be better in the old days. <coughs> Trouble is, we're living in the new day. So I remind myself of what that man said in the Power Hour, a religious programme which, for me, was very interesting. And I, I, I realised a lot of what he was saying has been said in many ways by many people, from the sciences to the non-sciences to the religious theology sciences it's all scientific it's about an understanding of life which we all learn as we go so um, my understanding is no bigger or smaller than anybody else's in the moment of now it may need informing by asking for help so the serenity prayer which I share at the end of these videos is all about can do can't do wisdom to know the difference and realising that life is worth living and that working on ourselves makes it worthwhile the serenity prayer, prayer a res restoration to serenity in madness doesn't mean the madness around us is going to go away but it gives us a, a stable place of starting again God grant me the serenity or to good grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the old life is gone. Courage to change the things I can. New life and attitudes. And the wisdom to know the difference. In the moment. Minute. Hour. Just for, just for today.